breaking news in the war on terror. A man who had a $25 million reward on his head and was perhaps the single most wanted terrorist in the world is dead after a successful U.S. airstrike. In a primetime address, President Biden telling the nation tonight justice has been delivered. Ayman al-Zawahiri took over al-Qaeda after the death of Osama bin Laden. Tonight, sources telling ABC News he was killed in a drone strike in Kabul over the weekend. Al-Zawahiri has been indicted for his alleged role in bombings of the U.S. embassies in Tanzania, Kenya, both in the late 90s. He also was connected with the first World Trade Center bombing and, of course, 9-11. He last made an appearance in a pre-recorded video released in May to mark 11 years since Osama bin Laden was killed by a U.S. airstrike. President Biden was in the Situation Room 11 years ago when President Obama announced bin Laden's death. And tonight, we are learning extraordinary details about just how precise this airstrike was. Chief Global Affairs anchor Martha Raddatz leads us off tonight from Washington. He has been in hiding for more than 20 years, one of the world's most wanted terrorists. But tonight, President Biden announcing the United States finally caught up with Ayman al-Zawahiri, killing the al-Qaeda leader in a weekend drone strike in Afghanistan. Now justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. People around the world no longer needed to fear the vicious and determined killer. The United States continues to demonstrate our resolve and our capacity to defend the American people against those who seek to do us harm. Zawahiri was Osama bin Laden's number two and a key strategist behind al-Qaeda's most vicious attacks against America. The assault on American soldiers in Somalia in 1993, the bombing of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania in 1998, the suicide bombing on the USS Cole in Yemen, and on September 11, 2001, the plot that destroyed the World Trade Center left a gaping hole in the Pentagon and claimed nearly 3,000 lives. President George W. Bush vowing to bring the terrorists to justice. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people... And the people who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. A decade later, the next president announcing U.S. Special Forces had killed their number one target. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. But Zawahiri remained elusive, hiding out in the border region between Afghanistan and Pakistan. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. Chief Global Affairs anchor Martha Raddatz joins me now from Washington. Martha, you've been talking with your sources all evening about this. What surprises you most uh, about what the president just told us? Very precision airstrike. Very precision airstrike. And, and I, I think we should all remember it was just about a year ago that there was a U.S. military drone strike that, that took out the wrong people that really indeed did take out civilians and they thought it was a bomb maker. This one was a CIA strike, senior administration officials saying a hel two Hellfire missiles were fired from a drone, that they only hit Zawahiri. He was standing out on the balcony of this house, right in the center of Kabul, right in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Kabul. Uh, the senior official also said the Taliban was aware he was there. Senior Taliban commanders, they say, knew that Zawahiri was there. So apparently he, he went there earlier this year. Uh, the U.S. got wind of that. The CIA got wind of that. They started tracking him in that house. They say he returned to that house to reunite with his wife and children, that they don't believe he ever left that house, but that he frequently went out on that balcony. And that is where they targeted him, right on that balcony. His family was inside, and they say the family was unharmed. There were zero, zero U.S. personnel on the ground anywhere there mm -hmm. or near that location. They were able to do this remotely, and that will certainly be an argument uh, by the administration that this so-called over-the-horizon counterterrorism uh, works. It certainly worked this time, but it does remain much harder when there is not U.S. personnel on the ground, Phil. Well, Martha, that was one of the first questions uh, 
we had when this happened. It, you're, you're saying that the Taliban, that uh, key Taliban members knew that he was there. So uh, I ask, could there be consequences for the Taliban for not telling America, or were they even cooperating with America? Well, the, the, the U.S. will certainly make a case that they were not cooperating and that it goes against agreements uh, with the Taliban, the Doha agreements, where the Taliban uh, said they would not harbor terrorists. Uh, Zawahiri was a terrorist. He was behind the 9-11 attack, and as we've said, so many attacks before that on, on soldiers in Somalia, the embassy attacks in 1998 in Kenya and Tanzania, the USS Cole attack, the suicide bomber. This man with Osama bin Laden was behind those attacks. There is no question he was a terrorist, and if the Taliban knew about it, the U.S. is going to really have a problem with that. Yeah. And tonight, as the president says, he is no more. Martha Raddatz, thank you so much. You bet. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.